So here in this video we want to define roots. Um, and I've already got three definitions up here in the interest of time. We will begin with what a square root is. It's also called a second root. Um, but a square root of, of something n, doesn't matter what it is, a square root of something, is anything that multiplies by itself two times to equal that something. Uh, let's look at some examples here. For example, um, 3 is a square root of 9. Why is that? Well, that's true because 3 times itself 2 times equals 9. But also, negative 3 is a square root of 9. Why is that? Well, you can imagine because negative 3 times itself 2 times also equals 9. So 9 actually has two square roots. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on. Um, 1.2 is a square root of 1.44. Because if you take 1.2 times itself 2 times, you get 1.44. Um, let's look at something else. How about um, negative 3 halves? is a square root of 9 fourths because negative 3 halves times itself 2 times is 9 fourths. I think you're getting the idea. just want to do a decimal, uh, a fraction. We'll do something with a variable here. 7x uh, to the third is a square root of 49 x to the sixth because if you take 7x to the third times itself you get 49x to the sixth and so yes there are many more examples but there are several there now a cube root um, a cube root or third root multiplies by itself three times to equal the expression okay a square root or second root multiplies by itself two times. And of course a fourth root multiplies by itself four times. Okay, So I won't do as many examples now. We've got the idea. Um, but here's an example of a cube root. Um, three is a cube root or third root of 27 because if you take three times itself three times you get 27. 2x squared is a cube root of 8x to the sixth because if you take 2x squared times itself three times you get 8x to the sixth. Um, let's see what about Let's do negative 3 halves again. Negative 3 halves is a cube root of negative 27 eighths because negative 3 halves times itself 3 times equals negative 27 eighths. By the way, the dots I'm putting between the parentheses, I don't have to put those. Uh, when you have parentheses next to each other, like I wrote in this uh, second example, that means multiplication. I'm doing it most of the time. I forgot to in this last one, but I'm doing it most of the time to emphasize that we're multiplying. That's really important here. Okay, so you get the idea about cube roots, and I'll just do two examples of fourth roots. Uh, negative 2x to the seventh is a fourth root of 16x to the 28th. That's because if you take negative 2x to the 7th times itself four times, you get 16x to the 28th. Um, and let's do one that sometimes is overlooked. How about the number 1? One? 1 is a fourth root of 1. 
uh, that one gets people sometimes. Well, it's true because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 equals itself. Okay. Uh, similarly, negative 1 is a fourth root because if you multiply negative 1 times itself 4 times, you'll also get positive 1. Okay, and let's go ahead and write that one. Why not? Negative 1 is also a fourth root of positive 1. Because as I said, when you multiply it by itself four times, you get positive one. Okay, so there are several examples of roots and what they mean. So let's do let's do some maybe problems with this. Determine the square roots of 25 x to the eighth. So what we're trying to do here is find something that can multiply it by itself two times to equal 25 x to the eighth. Well. To get the 25, we know we'd have to have a 5 times a 5, and to get to the x to the 8th, we'd have to have 5x to the 4th times 5x to the 4th. So what that tells us is 5x to the 4th is a square root of 25x to the 8th. So there's, there's a square root. Are there any others? Well, what about negative 5x to the 4th times itself? it also equals 25x to the eighth. So uh, negative 5x to the fourth is a square root of 25x to the eighth also. And that's it. Those are the only two square roots of 25x to the eighth. Let's try another. Okay, now I want to determine the cube roots of 64. So we're looking for something that will multiply by itself three times to equal 64. And, you know, what can be helpful is making your list of perfect cubes. However, uh, we don't need to do that here. We can just think, well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so that's too small. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. That's too small. 4 times 4 times 4, oh yeah, that's 64. So what that tells us is that 4 is a cube root of 64. And so then we start to use the same logic we did before. Well, what about, is there anything else that would multiply by itself to equal 64? And we know that these have to be 4s, because that's the only thing that would multiply by itself 3 times to be 64. So the question is, Will negative 4 times itself 3 times be equal to 64? The answer is no, because a negative times itself 3 times is negative, not positive. So in fact, 4 is the only cube root of 64. Another example, determine the square roots of 64. Well, since 8 times 8 2 times is 64, and negative 8 times itself two times is also 64. That tells us 8 and negative 8 are square roots of 64. So there are two square roots of 64 and one cube root of 64. Okay, so we have another example. Determine the fifth roots of negative 32 x to the 10th y to the 25th. So we're trying to find something that will multiply by itself five times to equal negative 32 x to the 10th y to the 25th. And if you want your answer to be negative, there's no way all of these could be positive. And since they all have to be the same, that means they all have to be negative. You can't have just one of them negative because you have to multiply something by itself five times. To get the 32, you can use two times itself five times. Two times two times two times two times two is 32. Now we have to get the x to the tenth. Um, and I didn't really leave myself enough room here, so I'm going to pause for a moment to create some more space. Okay, so we're trying to get the x to the tenth, which we know we'd have to have an x in each of these then. We just have to figure out what power to use. And x times x times x times x times x is only x to the fifth, which is not x to the tenth. So we try x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. And in fact, that is x to the tenth. 
Similarly, to get the y to the 25th, we'd have to use y to the 5th, y to the 5th, y to the 5th, y to the 5th, and y to the 5th. So what that tells us is that negative 2x squared y to the 5th is a 5th root of negative 32x to the 10th y to the 25th. And that's the only one, right? Because if these were positives, I wouldn't get my negative. So we're starting to notice, if we look at the examples we've done so far, um, it looks like when I have square roots, I'll get two answers. And when I have maybe what are odd roots, like a cube root or a fifth root, I will only get one answer. Well, I wonder if it's only true for square roots that I'll get two answers. Let's try another even root. Now I want to determine the fourth roots of 16x to the eighth. So something times itself four times needs to equal 16x to the eighth. And 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. And x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared is x to the eighth. But also, negative 2x squared times itself four times equals 16x to the eighth because you're multiplying an even number of things. So we have two fourth roots. 2x squared and negative 2x squared are fourth roots of 16x to the eighth. Okay? And so we can start to make a conclusion about even roots will have two answers and odd roots will always have one answer, but we have one more situation to encounter. Determine the square roots of negative 64. So we're trying to figure out something that multiplies by itself two times to be a negative 64. So if we multiply something by itself, it's got to be, if it's, if it's a positive thing, it'd be a positive times a positive to be negative 64. If it were a negative thing, it'd be a negative times a negative. This is impossible. We can't multiply a number by itself because we can't multiply, let's be more specific actually, we can't multiply a real number which you may not be aware of any other types of numbers yet, but um, any real number, we can't multiply a real number by itself and get a negative answer. In fact, we can't multiply a real number by itself an even number of times. This is two times, but in fact, four, six, eight, any even number of times, an even number of times, and get a negative answer. So it's also true, um, we know that for example, uh, 81 has a fourth root, but determine the fourth roots of negative 81. Well, that's impossible uh, because what we see is if I take a number times itself four times, a real number times itself four times, there's no way I could get a negative. So this is also impossible. Um, so the answer in these situations, let me create some more space here. The answer in both of these situations is um, negative 64 doesn't have any real number square roots. It's not a real number. And similarly, negative 81 doesn't have any real number fourth roots. So that's the answer in both of those situations. All right, so let's, let's draw up a conclusion here. Okay, so as we just saw, any even root, square root, fourth root, sixth root, etc., of a negative number has no real number answer. That's what we saw in these last two examples. We drew another conclusion from this video. An even root of a positive number gives two answers, the positive and the negative root. Like 16 has two square roots, two 
even roots, square roots are even. So there's two roots, the positive and the negative root. And we have one more conclusion. Odd roots, you know, people sometimes don't like odd numbers, but odd roots always give one answer. Whether well, it's positive, negative, anything, um, you'll never run into the situation with odd roots where you don't get a real number, and you'll never run into a situation with an odd root where you'll get two answers. So odd roots always give one answer. So hopefully this video did a good job of leading you to these conclusions and you have a good understanding of why they're all true.